Okay. Let's see if that's... That's okay. Volume wise. Okay, everybody, welcome to my studio. My name is Michael Markowski, and today we're going to be making a painting about one of the most endangered creatures on Earth, the glorious sea turtle. And I don't know that much about sea turtles. I've tried to do a little bit of, of research over the past little while, but this was uh, an, an idea, a, a topic, a theme that was suggested by one of our viewers. I th and I'm not sure because it, it about a month ago we were talking about possibly doing this. So I'm really grateful for people like yourself who are watching me right now who uh, are suggesting future ideas for future episodes. You can leave them in the chat. You can leave them on the Facebook group. We'll talk about that in a second. So, um, and let me know how the, the volume is here. I still don't have my new audio set up. Wow, that looks like it could be a little loud. Let's bring that down. Um, so let me know if my voice is too loud. It might have been pretty loud right there. Okay. So... I want to show you the picture here. So here is, this is the image uh, that that we're going to paint today. And there is a print, there's a, I did a tracing of this image. And you can print it out. So I've traced the image and you can print it out. All of it's for free. I'll show you where you can find it here. So there's a link to a Dropbox folder down below in the description. You click on inside the Dropbox number nine. Here is, you'll see these two files. This is the, the original photograph. And then there's two versions of the outline. One is just a JPEG and one is a, uh, a PDF. So either way, uh, you've got the, the, the essential files that we're gonna use today. So we'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, as mentioned, actually, you know, here, I'll just mention here, this is our, our uh, Facebook group, private Facebook group, just for people that are following along with the, the classes. And I've done, this is the fifth, fifth class that I've been doing here online. I did a drawing class, which many people have taken the drawing class. That was hugely popular. And if you're thinking about um, really getting into painting, oddly enough, knowing how to draw might be just as important than knowing how to mix your colors, etc. Because um, I think a good foundation for drawing helps give you a good uh, structure to your painting so that, you know, it's like a good foundation to a house, right? If your house is just built on mud and, <laughs> and popsicle sticks and then you put all of this concrete and beautiful furnishings inside, it might be a little bit shaky at the bottom. So anyway, I just, I'll, I'll mention that if you want to find any of those drawing courses, the photography course, the 45 episode intro to acrylic course, all of that is here on my uh, YouTube page. Just click on, I think, where would it be? Down below, I think somewhere here. Click on Markowski Art and you'll find it. Anyway, so this was, uh, I think it was suggested by Kelly, Shelly McCool. Um, but it might have been some other people mentioning it in the chat as well. So thank you, Shelly, and everyone else who watches for suggesting today's episode. That was back on February 23rd. So I do listen, I'm pointing to the wrong, <laughs> to my brain, but this is, uh, eventually it makes its way into my brain, uh, your suggestions. Uh, this is the, 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 the Facebook group on its own here. You can see the, the most recent images, people posting pictures, um, of uh, p recent paintings we've made. Look at all these cool images. Okay, so let's well, let's uh, move on though and talk about today's episode. And the, the, the subject of today's episode is the sea turtle. And 
uh, you know, here's a, here's a, a headline from CTV News, which is one of the largest news sites here in Canada, and talking about like the 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 um, you know uh, record-breaking deaths of sea turtles over the past 30 years, which is shocking and sad, and they're beautiful creatures. And it's, it would be really tragic if they were to disappear during our own lifetimes. Like, it's possible that my 20-month-old uh, daughter might, you know, grow up and never actually see a sea turtle in person, right? By the time she's old enough to see one, um, uh, they might all be gone, right? So here's another news article. Sea turtle deaths broke records last year. But let's not go too get too down um, uh, because despite that the sea turtles are going about their business as they've done for millions and millions of years and um, depending on where you are on earth right around kind of March 1st to October 1st is sea turtle nesting season in Florida it begins in May but uh, sea turtles nest in in Europe as well and, and in um, uh, South America Anyway, what's really cool about sea turtles is they just sort of crawl ashore. The female sea turtle crawls ashore and lays its eggs on the beach. And sometimes these are beaches that are popular with humans. And um, what is, you know, people can do their part by not disturbing the sea turtles because, like, they they are um, uh, they they can get scared quite easily. Oddly enough, it's the um, like light pollution which scares them the most when they see extra light you know at night or in the daytime um so people are asked to avoid them and alert uh, officials whenever possible anyway if you are thinking about um if this show may motivate you to uh, get involved uh, just a quick little plug for the wwf not the wrestling federation but the world wildlife foundation um and uh, there's places where you can help there. But uh, so I just wanted, I also thought it might be just, if you bear with me just for a second, to just kind of talk about how we find images and why we're using the specific image we're using today. You'll see that Shelly posted a couple of, of images, which were really great, and I was really excited about using them. And so I started, I know I did a, a sea turtle search, trying to find the, uh, that image that image because I want to I want to be able to give credit to the authors of the of that image and I couldn't quite find it right off the bat so you may or may not know you can do a reverse image search if you've ever watched Dr. Phil and they talk about um, people being catfished by someone and uh, here's a good way you can see if the image or the maybe the person you're online dating with right now if they're actually a real person so I click on Google I'll just kind of go back and show you how I'm doing this you can go to Google, and you'll see at the top right here, Google Images. You click on that, and you can go search by image. And you can paste, if well, uh, you can paste a URL or a link to, to that specific image. But maybe you have the image, you found it online somewhere, and you drag it to your desktop. You can go to Upload Image. And you can click on uh, Choose File. And let's see, which one was the, I think this was the image. So I'm just going to drag and drop that image in here and it'll start it'll show us I ideally it will show us where that image came from so let's kind of go here <laughs> and look at this so now and I've looked at a bunch of these pages trying to see which is the original if there's a photo credit but here's all of the different websites that are using the image at its full resolution actually let's go Back to any size here, uh, and here's here's all the websites that are using that image. So anyway, that image was impossible for me to track down. I thought it was a great great painting, although there was maybe a little bit too much detail, like in the coral and the and the sea. So another great place I use it. I'm not paid by these guys. This is, although this this is a website called Unsplash.com, which was just acquired by Getty Images. But let's say you could just type in here. These are all free images that you can use. So I just typed in here, sea turtle. And then now it pops up with thousands and thousands of images. There's over 10,000 free photographs 
that you can use for whatever purpose you like. All they ask is that you credit the photographer. And you can, uh, in my drawing class, we use this website a lot. Like I would just take a prompt and say, let's draw a baby or ears or a dog or a smile, all those kind of things. And you get lots of images that I could use here without having to worry about um, getting uh, a copyright strike or upsetting an or another artist. You know, being an artist myself, I, would, uh, I wouldn't want somebody to steal my images. Anyway, I looked through here long enough and I, this is the image that I settled on. There were a lot of other really cool ones. What I liked about this image is that it, it's relatively straightforward. We see the, the turtle from the side, which I, I thought was kind of uh, nice because we could kind of see the whole shape of uh, the turtle. And there's also, there isn't the coral on the bottom nor the uh, underside of the top of the water, which would be fun to paint. But if we're thinking about trying to get this painting done in the next three hours or so, um, then those are just extra things that are gonna add time on onto the the, uh, the process so here's where I settled here this is the photographer um, uh, even though half of my family is from Eastern Europe from Ukraine uh, this here is a name I don't I couldn't even begin to tell you how to pronounce that that would be let me try it Z Zdenek uh, Makachek maybe Matt Mahayek Z uh, Zdenek Zidnik uh, Mac. Uh, anyway, <laughs> that's my attempt. You can find his work. I, I, I'm, I guess I am assuming it's a it's a male photographer. It could be a female photographer or non-binary, non-gendered person. Uh, but here's another link to their uh, their work page, where I think these are images that you can pay to use. Okay, so I just thought I would get that out of the way here, and let's dive into our painting. So, if you've got the tracing, you can print it out, and I'm going to transfer it onto this canvas here. Um, one second, okay. So, I've got a canvas. This is a nine by 12 inch canvas that I got. If you wanna get this exact one, go down in the video description below and you can buy Okay. So, um, so I, th I, these are an extra dollar more than the ones you get at the dollar store. And I think they're far superior. Um, I'm, you, I just I also put an extra coat of white acrylic gesso on here after even after once I unwrap it take it out of the package and then I used 220 grit sandpaper um, so I do that every episode that just helps me get a nice smooth surface now I think there was some bugs that landed on the surface here while um, the paint the gesso was drawing and they have, uh, they're, they're now officially a part of this canvas, which maybe makes some sense that we're, since we're painting wildlife. Um, okay. And, and I, so anyway, I do all of that because I want the smoothest surface possible to paint on. Um, so I'm going to tape this image down. And where you put it it's kind of up to you i think probably right in the center is pretty good there are some images like we like even the the most recent painting we did the robert bateman painting on tuesday where i did move the picture a little bit off center um, anyway i'm going to use some carbon paper you can use graphite paper this is two-sided carbon paper and if I can get this, there we go. And again, I, I know I say all of this stuff many times for those of you that have been watching for me with me for months, but since most of my viewers are people that have never seen or heard me speak before, I always just like to try to cover some of these bases again. Okay, so 
Obviously this image here has a lot of detail. I'm not going to trace all of the detail on here because as you're going to see in a few minutes, a lot of it's going to get covered with paint and some of these details are just so fine that it's going to be really hard for me to um, to paint them at this stage, at an early stage anyway. So I just kind of, I, I put all of that in there in case somebody maybe wants to make this a huge painting. I saw a few people that are in the uh, Facebook group who have done larger canvases based on these images, right? So you never know if someone wants to do a mural of this. Uh, you've got all the tools. So I'm going to trace kind of the generic uh, version of this, mostly just the outlines. Um, okay. Like some of this texture on, uh, you know, the, I guess, would you call these? What do you call these? The flippers or the fins? Um, I don't. I, as I said, I'm not a uh, expert on turtle anatomy, so I don't know exactly what these different parts are. But I assume this is like, or a, is it a foot or an, a hand or an arm or a leg? Never really thought about it before. Um, let me see, I'll show you here obviously in a second what my version looks like. Uh, we'll get some of these wrinkles, this eye is obviously pretty important. Let me switch. I have that up on the screen so people can kind of see. Okay, I think I'm almost done here. It's really just the, the largest lines that I'm most concerned about. Um, even some of these details in there. I don't know if any of that's important. Oh, and in the background, you'll also see in the background, I added like this here. This is kind of the outside part of this rock. And even though in the photo here, it's not there. I don't know if this, you see this little bit of a rock? You could decide to paint it out entirely. Um, I'm just kind of extending it here. Uh, just for compositional reasons, I guess. Just because I didn't want... Uh, well, let, we'll talk about this here in a second. Let me just finish tracing all of that. Because, as I've mentioned many times before, even, you know, if you're painting from a photograph, sometimes you have to change your painting uh, and deviate from the photograph a little bit in order to make it look convincing, which sort of doesn't really, it seems kind of uh, illogical, but if, for instance, we just sort of think about this here, we have this bulge, you could say, well, oh, well, you know, in the photograph, uh, there was, but there wasn't anything down here, so I just painted exactly what I saw. And then other people will be, okay, uh, really? Maybe, maybe did you make a mistake? And so, I don't want anyone to have that, like the, the, the painting itself has to have its own logic. It's going to have to stand on its own despite whatever photograph it's based on. So that's why I'm just kind of continuing this line all the way through um, so that there's no, um, so that that kind of confusion doesn't happen. Okay. And I've used this carbon paper many times. I'm actually surprised at how well it's holding up after, you know, I must have used this about 10 times already. So it's a good, a good reminder that, you know, you could, with this 12 sheets of carbon paper, you know, there's still probably six of them that I haven't even used yet, and I've had this for, 
Like how many episodes have we have we done so far? I think uh, about sixty painting episodes. So it gives you an idea how how much use you can get out of one of those. Okay. Wow, there's lots of uh, action here in the chat. Let me just take a second to. Hi, everyone's talking about the, the snow turtles. Okay, cool. So, just want to make sure there's no um, <laughs> people talking about how they can't hear my voice, which happens occasionally, where I'm just blah, 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 and it turns out my microphone's been muted for 20 minutes, and then I go, ah. <laughs> okay. So, let's get some materials out. Everything that I'm going to use today fits inside of this shoe box. Um, the, uh, well, let me, I'll get to that in a second. So I've got my paints. If you want to get the paints that I use, that I'm using right now, there's links to all of that in the video description below. Uh, as well as different other paints that I, I recommend. So maybe you already have some uh, golden paints. Maybe you already have some liquid paints or Liquitex paints. Maybe you have some Amsterdam paints. Um, there's all sorts of different brands of acrylic paint out there. But if you want to get the ones that I suggest, there's also links to, I think, about seven or eight different brands. The most common ones around the world. So let me just get a bunch of brushes set up here. I'll explain which ones and why I'm using them here. This is this is not in case this is a brush for making or a toothbrush for <laughs> splattering paint, not for any emergency um, tooth brushing. I mean, maybe you never know. Maybe um, I'll get a surprise visit and I have to break out the uh, paint toothbrush. <laughs> okay. Oh, and then let's um. Let's start putting paint directly on this here. We're going to use, I think, most of the paint today. So I'm going to, I'm basically going to put all the paint here on the palette. You see, I've got um, a cool yellow and a warm yellow. A cool red and a warm red and a cool blue and a warm blue. Oh, you know, I just, I just, as it occurs to me, I, I saw a comment on our the most recent video, the Robert Bateman, and uh, one of our students said he was unable to download the Robert Bateman outline, the tracing that we did. Did anyone else have any problems with that? I didn't think so, since I see so many people have uh, made paintings that appear like they may have been done with, with the... Uh, with the outline, but I just thought I would check in case maybe there's been a problem. I, I, I looked myself and didn't seem like it was a problem on my side, but anyway. Okay, so, um, how are we going to make this painting? Let's, so generally what we've done in the past is we've taken a warm yellow and uh, and we just put the whole a ground of warm yellow all over the entire surface here, and that works really well. If you if you there's there's two reasons why you would just put one solid uh, color to start. Usually it's because you you have a pretty clear idea for for landscapes particularly that would work really well. Um, for portraits, generally, that would work pretty well. And or if you don't even know what you're going to be painting yet. 
So a lot of the time, like the impressionist painters would, you know, they would um, prepare their canvas pretty much exactly like I have, but except without a drawing on it, right? They'd have their, their canvas and they've gessoed it and sanded it. And then they would put a warm ground, uh, usually a warm yellow or warm brown, earthy tone. And then they would let it dry and then they put it in their backpack or um, on their portable easel and then go out into the world and make uh, a landscape sketch directly from nature. And so having it prepared with some yellow would be great because you're already, you're, you don't even have to do any thinking, it's already ready to go. You've got that step. Today we're going to do just a little bit of a tweak on things. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use some cool yellow. So I'm going to put a ground of cool yellow, which we haven't done in a while, um, because we're painting underwater and the as you know it, this is a relatively cool environment in, in terms of color temperature right um that you know as well as potentially a cold water in terms of just like you know putting your toe in there and ooh, that's cold but it's also just the 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 the, the, the temperature of the color is colder underwater generally obviously not all the time but generally it's going to be a colder color so i'm going to use a cool yellow <clears throat> to to paint most of the the outer part of this image um, and that's also going to help push the the background into the background so that so that the turtle itself is going to pop forward so i'll kind of show you how we're going to do this so let, we're going to take our cool yellow and I'm going to get some water on here. Not too much. But this is just going to help thin it out just a little bit. And the reason why I'd want to thin it out just a little bit is I want some of the white of the canvas to show through. Um, to help give it like a luminous kind of quality here. Okay. And so I'm going to put this cool yellow all the way across, even over top of the turtle. We're going to paint some a lot of warm colors over top of this turtle. So that's going to help move, pull it forward in space. You could potentially paint, um, you know, around this and put a cool yellow only in the uh, background and I have done that in certain paintings in the past it just takes a little bit more time and quite frankly the difference between these two yellows at this point is feral is marginal okay so you see I'm kind of going back and forth really what I'm just trying to do is making sure that that yellow is getting in all the little into the weave of the canvas now I have a smoother canvas than it was right out of the box because I sand I put some gesso and sanded it so there's less likelihood I'm gonna miss anything but if I was using it like a thick like burlap or something to paint on then I'd really be kind of like scrubbing in there because I don't want any of the white of the canvas poking through anywhere I want this to be a nice unified solid canvas and that this cold yellow is going to have kind of a glowing effect it's going to glow through the color and i know some people are going to say well, I, well, why but there's why i don't understand why would we want yellow glowing through here well we're going to paint some blues and greens in the background anyway right and we want, we want every, we really, everybody wants their canvas to be luminous, to, to have, to be just sort of bursting with life and energy. So this yellow, it's going to mostly disappear, but it's, it's going to be, the way that light works in like 20 words or so, you know, it's going to, it's going to, the light from the sun or from the lights in our room, is going to bounce through or it's going to kind of dig its way through all the layers of paint and then 
bounce back towards our eyes. So even though something like this might be underneath all these colors, we're still going to see it. Whether we know we see it or not is a whole other thing, but this is just one of the tricks that artists use and have been using for, uh, I don't know, how many, maybe six or seven hundred years. Um, and who am I to uh, suggest that, um, you know, it's, it's, it just works. I mean, I, I, I do see, there's a lot of people, a lot of other teachers on YouTube who just go, who start painting images directly onto white canvas. And um, that works. Obviously, that you can get pretty good results with that. Um, but often I find like they're almost... There's something slightly uncanny or unnatural about that, those, the colors that result from that. Okay, just have this overhead light. I'm just gonna put the new battery in here. Hopefully this battery's charged. blow dry this here actually the little spot any little dust that settles on the surface of your canvas especially while it's wet it's just better just to let it dry and when it's dry to pick that that bug or hair or dust bunny or tumbleweed or whatever it is off afterwards Yeah. Oh, look at a lot of people have seen some. A lot of people have uh, sea turtle experiences here. Okay, I'll, I'll get I'll get to those maybe next time we got a little bit of paint drawing on here. Let's do that just a bit, a little bit bright. Okay, so, hmm, how should we begin this next? So, I probably what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start painting the background. I'm going to do a first, um, a first layer of paint. We might do a couple of layers on here, and we'll, we'll go right up to the edge, and then I think we'll, we'll paint, we'll do a first attempt at the turtle itself. And then we'll come back, we'll finish the background, and then we'll come back and finish the turtle. So we sort of back, we'll sort of background, foreground, background, foreground, done. <laughs> if that makes sense, right? And that's pretty much how I do most of the paintings. Sometimes there might be a, a couple more uh, background, foreground, background, foreground um, um, movement, but I think this should be good. So let's think about these colors here. Um, do I want to show how about mi color mixing? I don't have the websites queued up. Um, I, well, I guess I'll just say really quickly without having to demonstrate. I could demonstrate this, um, but you know, one of the things, you know, this turtle looks very vibrant and the colors look super saturated, like these, this yellow right here, 
yellow, and these oranges in here look really, really bright, especially com you know in comparison to the background. But the truth is, is that these colors, which I was just talking about, that seem really, really bright, are actually there's a, probably gray in every single thing on this painting. That all of these colors have been tinted or toned down. Tint to tint a color, we add white to the color, and when we when we add tone to a color or when we modify the tone, we, we're adding gray to the color. And then when we add black to a color, we're adding shade or throwing shade. Right. Um, so I th that's useful for a few things to think about. Why why those colors seem really vibrant is because the colors in the background are so desaturated right that makes even the colors that are also desaturated pop because they're surrounded by desaturated um, toned down colors or in tinted colors um, so there's really very little color here that I can see that is actually full strength color now I as you may know I tend to kind of like very saturated colors anyway so we probably will I probably will have some pretty bright oranges and yellows and blues in here but I just want there's so so it's important to kind of know that's that almost everything here has a little bit of gray and white mixed into every single color and the other thing to think about is this is this is an image that takes place underwater right and water like to, to take this photograph or to look at this photograph underwater we're looking through water and water while it appears to be transparent is not you know in, in a completely 100 percent transparent and infinitely transparent hence why you know if you're swimming underwater you cannot see the curve of the earth on the, you know like the horizon you can see maybe depending on how clear the water is you might be able to see um, you know uh, uh, maybe 10 20 meters in front of you or you know what, what would that be like 30 feet in front of you that might be a, probably pretty good visibility but you're not going to be able to see kilometers or miles away of perfectly crystal clear even if you were to go swimming like if you think about going swimming in a swimming pool even you know you know I, I love swimming uh, you know and if you're in like a long if you're doing, I used to do lengths all the time and if you're, even if you're wearing goggles the people at the far end of the pool are kind of blurry a little bit right it's like you're wearing glasses that are a little bit out of prescription or something um, or you normally wear glasses but you take your glasses off anyway they appear to be a little bit blurry um, and then you pop out of the water and you can see somebody's head you know way on the other side of the pool swimming and you go down and you can just barely see their legs right it's because you're you're in a substance and that substance while it appears mostly clear you can see your own hand it is not infinitely clear just as you know when you get out of the water and you're and you're looking you know if you go to um, uh, if you're standing on one side of a valley and you're looking the other side you could see the other side but it's not as crystal clear as your hand right it, it looks a little bit kind of gray so just so we want to be reminding ourselves that we're we're looking through a substance at, at this image and that's good that's another reason why we're gonna have a lot of tints and tones in this painting whether you want to paint them all is totally up to you so you may want to think about having uh, some white and black to make a gray, or you can you can also buy pre-made grays. There's there's grays you can buy at most art supply stores as well. You probably know that I like to mix all of my colors anyway, but if you were doing a lot of uh, of underwater paintings, you may want to or you're doing a lot of landscape painting you may want to think about having a gray in your uh, palette so that you can um, reach for it and, and just squeeze gray out rather than mixing paint all the time um, and if I was to get a gray I would sort of try to get 
a, a gray that's, you know, because there's lots of different um, uh, uh, tones, right? You could have a gray that is almost, for all intents and purposes, looks like a white, and you can have a gray that, for all intents and purposes, looks almost pure black, right? So you kind of would want something around halfway so that you could add a little bit more white to lighten it or add a little bit of black to darken it. I know that seems kind of obvious, but maybe for some people that that's um, helpful. Okay, so um, speaking of which, let's start painting the, um, the water here. And where should we, it doesn't really matter what, what side we start, whether we do this side or this side first. I, although I do think, let's paint, uh, we're, just for all intents, let's just, we're gonna paint this here, and then we'll paint this side here. I think just because we'll, we've got, we, we're already painting with this yellow, we're gonna mix a green that's gonna go in here. So to get that color, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cool yellow. In fact, I'm going to need a bit more of it. Um, okay. And then I'm going to get some blue. And you see how I, I, I take this color? I'm just going to put it to the side. And I'm going to slowly mix it into here. Because I don't want to just take the scoop of here and then it's it's really really dark blue now this is you know a super saturated green right it's almost fluorescent so if we paint this in here it if, if we painted this green right here right now it would look like there was this was outside of the water with like really really bright light shining on it right it would look very unnatural like a like a candy store color so let's modify it let's add some white to it now when we add white to it that looks pretty good but now it's also really really it's, it's lost saturation because when we add white to the color it appears to get lighter, but it also loses saturation. So it's it's brighter, but less saturated. It becomes kind of pastel, right? So that color is kind of, could be nice if we had some really bright highlights. We might use this color at some point, but what we need is a little bit of black. And when I say a little bit of black, I mean a little bit of black. <laughs> I'm gonna put here, like just kind of watch, I'm gonna take I say a little bit of black. That might even be a little bit much. We'll see. And I'm just going to mix. This in here. Now, I, I probably, if I painted them side by side, you'd be able to see a little bit more of the, the difference. But now what we have is we have this color that we mixed which is has lost its intensity and it's darkened down a little bit so let's just, let's just start trying to paint actually let me get a smaller brush here so i'm gonna get this smaller brush and then i'm gonna paint in here you can see i'm i'm deliberately being quite sloppy. In fact, you know what? Let's just cover this whole thing. And if it gets a little bit brighter or darker, that's fine too, right? As I go a little bit further, maybe I'll just pull this down here. As I go a little bit further down into the water, we're gonna have less um, 
the, the you know the, the water has a little bit of a harder time getting all the way down there so it could be it will get a little bit darker now see how this is a bit more of a gray it's pretty might be a little intense I should have this would be the next color but let's just put Just gonna take this. Now I can modify any of this at any time, but I want a little bit of this color that I mixed earlier, so I'm just going to wipe my brush. And, you know, if I've, so I've got this paint, and let's say I'm like, whoa, but it's too bright now. I'm going to mix it again right off to the side. And just steal a little bit of that color. So I've got my the original color, and I'm just stealing a little bit of that gray onto the brush. And then I'm painting this in. So it looks kind of gross and sloppy right now. That's okay. I just want to get some things into basic position here. And again, this is a, there's going to be another layer after this that will come in. So don't worry. You're like, oh, but those aren't the right colors, Michael. What are you doing? Have you lost your mind? <laughs> Maybe. But I'm also still early in the painting process here. Um, okay, and you can see I've also changed things a little bit, maybe, let's say, if I, if I want, you know, my, my, my uh, palettes, the paint is still a little bit wet, so I can kind of wipe a little bit off, and I can change this here if I want. Yes. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to really be super obsessed with trying to match the, the exact rock formation there on the left. If you want to, then by all means, that would be a fun exercise, but I want to paint the sea turtle as the subject of today's painting, not underwater rocks. Which, you know, it would be probably a good idea to learn how to paint underwater rocks. Maybe maybe one day we'll, we'll do a, a paint the news when underwater rocks are threatened with extinction. But you, who knows these days? Oh, uh, you know, maybe you know. In, in five years, people will ridicule me for for making a joke about endangered underwater rocks, um, and how ignorant I was at the time. How how could I have not known? Uh, okay, so let's uh, paint the um, this. Uh, the 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 water that's a little bit further deeper um, away here. So this water here is going to be mostly our cool blue with some um, black or black and white. I mean, or gray really. So let's. I'm going to take some white. Just mix a bit of a gray right now. Okay. Take our blue, and I'm just going to mix this off to the side. Let me see. There. So I'm probably going to need a bunch of this. So there's a few different thoughts on this. Personally, I don't mind. I personally, I would recommend that rather than making a big you know mixture a big pot of one color that you try painting like I'm painting mixing color as you need the color both because that'll save you from 
using and making a whole bunch of extra color that you don't need and it just goes into the trash or down the drain and probably a good idea not to put paint like big gobs of paint down the drain anyway at the after just while I'm thinking about it after I'm done painting every session I take a rag and I wipe as much of the paint off and then throw that into the garbage um, so that I'm not washing big gobs of this paint down the sink because guess who um, is going to be living in that water full of this paint? Little Mr. Turtle, right? Or Big Turtle. Anyway, um, but it's also a really good habit to kind of get into uh, mixing your paint over and over again is going to force you to have to, um, to learn how to mix color better and better each time. So, and don't worry about if this color isn't exactly perfect. We're going to do another layer of paint after this. Once we, we painted a little bit more of the turtle. You see how I, I get a little bit of paint on here? And then I like brushing, I kind of scrub it out. I paint pretty thin. I'm pretty thin with my paint. Uh, okay, so I'm going to take this. I'm just going to add a little bit more white, a little bit of black to it. So I've got that same color. It might be a little bit more blue as I come up. So the reason, another reason why I'm not putting this on super, super thick is that I don't want to cover the, all the yellow entirely with this layer either. You can see, like, you see how I, I, I'm getting a little bit of paint over the turtle? That's actually a good thing. I'd rather have some paint over the turtle so that I don't have any space be between the background and the creature itself. Now, with my subsequent layer of paint, I can, um, I can modify this, I can brighten it up, I can darken it, etc. Right, I can do a little bit of that right now if I wanted. I could get a little bit more just of the blue, add a little bit more blue in here. But, okay, we're just going to wait for this to dry. rock maybe I'll, I'm just gonna as I've already just sort of painted that in there I kind of like so maybe I'm gonna Just seeing, it might have been a, I hope it's still working. Hmm. Um, okay. Yeah, let me know in the chat. Thanks, Josh, for, for commenting about the, the stream keeps buffering. It's working, you're back. Okay, cool suddenly shut off so okay so we've got kind of our ground here painted I'm happy with the way all of this looks
Okay, so then let's get a different view here. So we've got, we had um, cool, everything here right now is a bunch of cool colors. So what we want to do with our turtle is to paint the turtle with warm colors. So there's a contrast between the warm turtle and the cool background. Um, so let's, uh, we want potentially, there's a couple, one option would be to take some um, warm, in fact, let's do that. Let's just do that option as I'm thinking about it. I'm gonna take some white. The white's gonna help cover a little bit. And some warm yellow. So I'm gonna take this mixture. And I'm gonna paint this over top of this turtle here. I'm trying to kind of clean up some of these edges here. So I'm just going over some of the parts that might have been covered with um, the background and just cleaning up yeah the, the, the outer edge I guess I probably should have blow dried this I see some of this paint is still a bit wet but So once that's done, then I'm just taking a little bit more warm yellow. Just painting it. Over everything here. Because this, on its own, is going to help create a bit of a, more of a separation between the the, the turtle and its background. Because we've got a bit of a warmer yellow on here. And warm colors advance towards us, towards the viewer. Cool colors recede. So, I mean, you could skip this step if you wanted. It's not super, super important, but um, since I'm kind of pressed for time, I'm always trying to think of like what I can do to kind of, um, like rather than doing those little touch-ups as I go, if I just do it all at once, then I'm I, that's like saving a few steps. Um, okay, so let's take a look at, um, oops, that's not what I want, I want, okay, let's, let's actually, now let's blow dry this, I keep thinking that we should blow dry something cool.
Okay, so um, let's start mixing some blues and yellows uh, for um, for this blues, blues, yellows, and oranges. Okay, so that this is again that we made this on our our first and second episodes of our painting course. So if you're wondering where this image comes from and how I got it, you can go to um, go watch the that whole original course, or you can just watch those first two episodes. Um, I also did uh, a video maybe four, five, six years ago. I don't know how long ago it was now. Uh, that's like 10 minutes long that explains this in a pretty snappy way. It's got like a couple hundred thousand views. Um, so that, but if you want the kind of the long explanation where I go into all those details, that's in one of the, the, the episodes that we filmed back in September. Anyway, so if we want kind of nice warm oranges, then we can mix our warm red and our warm yellow. When we mix those together, we're going to get these colors in the outer side of the color wheel, which you know, these are going to be, would be really, really nice colors if we were painting like a pop art painting. But as I said, there's going to be, maybe, maybe I might use a color like this, a warm yellow with a warm red, mostly warm yellow, for a highlight. Like maybe I might use that color, you know, in some of these places in the, the top of the shell, maybe. Even then, they're going to have a little bit of white and gray in them. Um, similarly, with some of these other colors in there, everything's going to be kind of diluted. So there's two ways to kind of go about it. One way is we could mix this color, and then we can add a little bit of gray in it. And if we do that, it's going to pull it towards the neutral core. Another option would be to use, let's say, your cool red and a cool yellow, which are both cooler colors, but since they're very close to the neutral core, they're going to be kind of pulling that color in, and it's going to replicate a little bit of what it looks like when we add gray to this more saturated color, right? We could even, I mean, I won't, I was going to say, I could do a little demo, but that's, one thing I've learned my lesson about doing it is when I start at mixing paint to make a little demo I we end up having like one of these five hour long classes so I'm just gonna stick with one I, I one painting Michael maybe only make one painting tonight um I have to tell myself that otherwise I just run off on these tangents but anyway um so let's mix so as I said I, I anyway what I was saying is there's two there's there's lots of different ways to get at this color. I could mix a, a saturated color and then desaturate it with a gray, or I could take a mixture using colors that are quite opposite from one another on the color wheel and mix those together, and I'll get a very de I'll also get a desaturated um, orange, which is which will be sim if I mix the cool yellow and the cool red together. I'll get a desaturated orange um, on its way towards the neutral core. If I wanted to make it even more gray, I would add just a little bit of blue to it, and that would kind of suck it right into the middle. So I think for this painting, I'm just going to do a little bit of both, just so you can kind of, kind of see that in action. So why don't we, um, let's paint the top part of the shell first, or at least a little bit of it. So let's start with a warm yellow and a warm red. All right, we mix these together. Really nice, bright color. All right. However, this color, you know, if I paint that in there, it's going to look like a, um, I'm, I'm painting a toy turtle and not a real turtle. And even then, even if it was a toy turtle, it would still it would look really weird because it's the color's too saturated. So, um, let's do, let's add, let's make a gray here. We'll mix it, it with gray to kind of get, to just, um, tone it down a little bit. And it's worth just as a 
super quick little aside there. Think about how we use that term. Like, you yell at your kids, tone it down over there, you're making too much noise, right? When you say tone it down, right, we're adding gray to a color, and you're, you're like you're yelling at your kids to lower the volume, right, to, to be less intense, right? Uh, tone it down, we're on the airplane or on the bus. <laughs> um, so that's what, when you add gray to a color, you're toning it down. Just imagine yourself yelling at, at your kids or somebody else's kids or, um, anyway. Uh, so here now I've got this gray. Now, it, yeah, it looks, if you're, if you look at it right here, you're like, well, now that's a pretty kind of blah, um, orange. But keep in mind, this is probably, at the end of the day, maybe even brighter than the brightest orange in the photograph. You might, you, you might not think so. Um, do I want to, I, but if we did, if we use the color picker, there are some resources below, some website links. Let's do, I'm, I'm going to take a tiny, forgive me here, tiny little detour, because I think it might be helpful for people to see this. So let me bring up, because I keep teasing it, so let's actually do it. Where's my link here? Um, give me one second to get both of these. Color picker and... So here's um, a, uh, there's this link, these two websites I'm about to show you. There's links for them in the video description below, I think under color mixing tools. So let's go here. And these are, for, this is all free. I try to make as much of this stuff totally free and accessible to people. Um, where's our Dropbox? So I'm going to upload the picture that we're painting from right now. And I want you to see, let's go to the brightest color in here. Let's kind of, let's zoom in. Not gonna let me zoom in. Oh, there we are, okay. Um, hmm. Hmm. Okay, I can't get this to... Got it, and it was... Okay. Okay, let me see if I can find... Okay. So you see that, here's this color. This is, I'm looking for the brightest colors in here on this on the, the back of this turtle here no and, and keeping your eye on how it's moving around here if this color was fully saturated it would be way up here in the corner but notice how even when I'm clicking around here that the color this is the orange color but look how much gray it is here's this shows you what this color is actually looks like Look at here, I'm clicking in the brightest parts of this turtle here. And we're getting into this kind of muddy looking color. All right, that's maybe the brightest one I've seen so far. And even there, it's not fully saturated. You see how it's it's absorb it's moving towards the neutral core here. Similarly, um, let's go to let's say some of this yellow, or what appears to be a bright highlight of yellow in here. Here's this color. It's like a green. It's pretty close to, to, but it's still got lots of gray in it. In the background here, right? Or even this, the the water. Yeah, I'm just gonna move. Um, so okay, here's look at this. Here's where this highlight is. 
here's as bright of a color as we can get. Here, right, so this is the brightest highlight on that the fin there. So, and let's see in here. Let's go to the top of the water where it's the brightest. That's pretty good. So that's pretty. I mean, even there though, it's kind of moving towards the the gray and the black. So. Anyway, I just wanted to kind of show that because some people may doubt when I'm talking about when I'm mixing these colors. Okay, so this color, which appears to be kind of blah on here, as I, as I said, is the is the brightest color that we actually have. Now, having said that, I am going to brighten it up a little bit because we we would we don't want to go super super gray just yet. We, we, because we can always tone it down by adding a wash or something over top of it. But let's, um, you know what? I'm just going to take this color. I'm going to paint it over this whole part of the shell. Oh, I've lost a lot of my lines. That's okay. I mean, I, it, it's okay for me. I guess maybe I should be painting a little bit thinner because not everyone's able to have as much confidence in... Hmm. Well, you know what? That's a, I was going to say maybe I, I was going to maybe wipe some of this paint off. But... I think it would be a good challenge for everyone to to see if you can do this kind of thing and still because we've done this when we've accidentally painted facial features out. I think that's okay. We'll, um, I'll, I'll I'll kind of show as we go through here, and it's don't worry about making it absolutely perfect either. Part of that is because I painted such um uh, there was there's some white in that color which is really covering up anything that was below there and i might add a little bit of white highlights afterwards okay so our next um the bottom down here is it's going to be like uh, I'm going to take a couple of the blues down here because I want it to be warm but this cool blue has also got a nice kind of pop to it so I'm going to take this color and I'm going to take a bit of the warm yellow now this is going to make it a bit of a brownish if I'm not if I'm not too careful, all right. Let's put a bit of white in here. Uh, get a bit more yellow. Okay. And I'm going to go with a slightly smaller brush here. So I got a bit more of like a grassy green that I'm painting with here. And I'm just going to paint, let's say, some of the darker parts of this turtle.
Okay, and now, um, yeah, that's good. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit more warm yellow. And Painting the underside. I think with the next one, I'm going to go much more warm yellow. So this is mostly warm yellow. <laughs> now I'm kind of afraid I might be losing some people by doing this kind of thing but um, ultimately this would be kind of where you'd want to get to anyway okay so and we're gonna I'm gonna be tinkering around in here and painting all of it so but I've got my my basic colors in here that are gonna be now underneath everything and so now if I paint some, um, a bit more of the cooler colors, oops, over top of this, because there's really some beautiful, um, beautiful cool colors, cool uh, yellows and blues. But if I paint those cool colors over top of, of other cool colors, it's going to push it backwards and it's, there's going to be a confusion as to what's on the front, what's coming towards us and what's going backwards. So having these layers of nice warm colors here is good. Even if I put cool colors on top of it, it's going to resist going backwards too much. So let's leave that up here on the screen here. I'm just going to take a look at the chat. Okay. Um, let's see. Joshua says off topic, but when will the next celebrating viewer paintings happen? Just wondering because I was not there previously. Wanted to see my paintings critiqued. Um, usually I do about once a month. So next one to be sometime in May probably. I might do, well, might be a little, in a couple of weeks, because we didn't quite get, uh, I didn't, wasn't able to do all of the, the paintings. We only did, let's say, the first um, five of each series. So, um, yeah, you're, because uh, I don't know if you, because you only joined us over the past uh, few weeks, Joshua. So we, we've been painting for <laughs> a couple of months already in this series, so... That's why your paintings didn't make it on camera, because uh, we still had to do all the paintings we were doing before you joined us, right? So, um, it'll probably be a couple of weeks from now when we get a few more paintings behind us. And also, I think I mentioned in that episode, there were a number of paintings that only had two or three people actually did those paintings, while some of the other ones had 10, 15 people had done those paintings. So, rather than me let's say critiquing let's if i did a critique on saturday of this painting there might only be one or two people who've actually finished this painting so that's why i let things kind of um develop shall we say over a period of time okay so now i've got this in a position where i'm pretty happy with it i think what i want to do now is i want to go back to the background and i want to finish the background and then we'll come back and then we'll finish the turtle. We may have to do another turn at it, but um, ideally we'll, get, we'll nail the background perfectly well right now. Okay, so to do that, 
Um, what should we do here? We're going to paint like a cool yellow in the background. So let's mix. We're going to we're going to now do this, I think first. I think or maybe you know what? actually I'm going to paint this first cuz that way I can kind of blend this out onto the background over top of it. So since this is further behind, let's do that first. Okay. So I'm going to take some white and some of this cool blue. I'm going to need a little bit more of each. <clears throat> and I'm going to put some slow dry medium on here. Just going to help give... Uh, allow things a little bit more time to to paint and blend. Okay. And again, I'm going to take just a little bit of black to put that in there. Okay, nice and juicy, okay. And now I'm going to paint this right up to here, and I may just kind of cut in and give it a little bit of a... a look, like less, um... Uh, so it's not a straight line there. Again, I'm going to cut a little bit over top of the shell so they overlap nicely. And then as I start going a little bit further down, I'm just going to add a little bit more blue into my mixture. So it's a little tricky at the moment because just to actually see what the what colors are actually what they actually are, because the paint is is wet and as when it's wet, it can be a little deceptive to. Sometimes it looks a little bit brighter or darker, so we might have to just let it dry. You know, we can always glaze over top of it and darken anything. It is should be darker. You know what? Actually, I'm gonna. I was gonna say it should be darker down here, but because this paint is already starting to dry a little bit, that I think is gonna be a glazing thing. So I think we'll let this dry. Let's work on this part here, and then then we can kind of touch up this. So to get this, it's gonna be the same sort of thing. I need some more cool yellow. Okay. Just taking some cool. 
cool, yeah, well. So mix it in here. And then I'm gonna grab a little brush. And with these rocks, I kind of, the way that I paint rocks is you can see how I'm holding my brush. Look how far up I'm holding it. As opposed to doing fine little details like this. I'm holding it much higher up. It's kind of like dabbling, dabbing paint here. This initial color is, is a little bit quite saturated. Notice how when I paint over some of the... It has different effect when I'm painting over the darker one versus the lighter one. Which I think is great. I like that a lot. Okay, now I'm going to add um, a little bit more blue in here, so a little bit more in. Okay, I need some white and some gray. We're going to start diluting or, or pushing this a little bit back and darkening it down. Okay. Don't worry about if you if you paint over anything on the turtle's head there at all. You can always just add a little bit of white and whatever was there will disappear. So one of the things I'm kind of going for is I want a bit of a soft look for um, the, these things in the background. So I kind of want like a slightly out of focus kind of look. So you can use your mop brush or a big fluffy brush, makeup brush. You can kind of work in a pinch just to kind of just going around and softening some of the edges a little bit. Okay. Continue doing this. I'm going to add a little bit more black, a little bit more white in here.
machine I forgot I should have added some slow dry medium as well. I'm like, why is it not blending? Okay, that's because it's drying super quick as acrylic does. So that's why I put some slow dry medium on here. See how now it starts kind of looking a little bit slightly out of focus if we keep on doing this. Even going right over these edges here. I probably should have blow dried that before I start doing that blending. again with a little bit of white mirroring, a little bit of black. So I'm just sort of like stealing dark colors, adding a bit more of uh, brighter colors in here. Actually, you know what? I think I think I might leave that and, and glaze some of this here. So I'm gonna blow dry that, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do a lot more of this work with glazing because the glazing is actually really good for underwater stuff. Um, so if you have your a glazing fluid, that would really help. Another quick thing is, you know, when I, if I've got a lot of paint on my brush, I wipe it off onto a cloth before I try to clean it in my water. That helps. Um, it makes it easier to clean your brushes because there's just less paint you got to get off the brush. And also, if you put other brushes in the dirty water, they're not. If there's a bunch of wet paint sitting on the bottom, then every time you put your brush in there to clean it, you're picking up paint that's just sitting there at the bottom. If you, uh, you could be like um, Bob Ross, and he's got his garbage can where he beats the devil out of the, out of the paintbrush, right? <laughs> Beat the devil out of it. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, I'm gonna blow dry this and then we'll use some glazing to help that. Cause right now, if I just keep on doing this, I could make it work, but it could also take me a while.
Okay. So, um, this color is, it's, it's, basically we're going to use a lot of, uh, it's going to be mostly blue with a little bit of green and, and white and our, our uh, glazing fluid. So, take this paint here, Maybe a little bit more white. That's pretty close. And it doesn't really, it's not really showing up on camera very well, but okay. So now I'm going to take my glazing fluid, make it pretty generous with it, and then I'm going to take a brush. Oops. Ah. To be that orangey or um, greenish. Okay. So now I can take it and I can glaze over things. Soften it up. So, as I've said hundreds and hundreds of times, the great thing with glazing is it's perfect for if you're a little bit afraid of going too far too fast. You can add this. I'm actually just going to put it over the whole thing. First layer of glaze. Right, everything just sort of gets a little bit hazy and muddy, which is great. That's what I want. I'm looking at the time, okay. So this is why I didn't want to do the coral reef, because you can see this is already taking me um, some time. Okay. So now I'm going to paint a little bit with this glazing fluid, and then occasionally just blend it back in. You could decide how dark you want to go, but again, if you put a lot of blending fluid in there, it uh, it's going to be mostly transparent, and you can kind of take your time and go as light or dark as you want. And I, I'm going to eventually do a few little pops of our highlights on here. Okay. 
Okay, so after you've painted for a little bit, you want to blow dry all of this, so, because otherwise it's going to start sticking. Oops, that's... To itself. Okay, so let's just keep on going with this. I've got my paints up here. I'm gonna add a little bit of black into this mixture. A little bit of blue. Put some slow dry medium in there. All right, so before we were kind of doing some of the highlights, a little bit of a brighter stuff. Now I'm kind of painting in some of the darker things. So I'm trying to create the effect of like this rock face just sort of disappearing into infinity in behind here. And the actual area where it kind of ends is unclear because of the thickness of the water. I was going to say I'm kind of changing things and then I, so I'm working from the big shapes down to the smaller shapes. on doing this and blending it out which softens those edges up more and more that's why you can't be too precious because then if you get too precious then you've got an area you really really like and then when you do the blending it kind of disappears so you just gotta keep on going
Okay. So right now there's a lot of green in here. As I'm going, I'm just going more and more to just cool blue. Okay. Got my cool blue here. Some black, a little bit of white. And slow dry. Or sorry, a glazing food. My apologies. So this is glazing food we're using. Like when you do this, it almost see, it, at times feels like you've just blended away everything you just put down. And maybe, maybe you have, but it's just sort of leaving like a, like you're, you're very slowly integrating different values into these areas. taking that glaze and just pushing it out a little bit further here and putting a lot more glazing fluid in here. dark gray in. Okay, I'm going to blow dry that again. I'm gonna go. That's ooh, that's a lot of black. Oops. If you get that much black on, just kind of rub it off onto the cloth. Okay.
I just sort of, I, I haven't been looking at the original, and I'm just looking like, whoa, this I've done quite, uh, I've got a different sort of pattern back here than the original, but uh, I don't know, it doesn't bother me. Slowly just getting darker and darker. Oops, that's probably per well, let's see. Let's incorporate a bit of this dark, dark black in there. I don't really want any pure black because the the black is gonna push things right to the foreground. And if we use any black, we're gonna want it in the actual turtle itself. So rather than make pure black, I've just added a lot more cool blue into with black. See, I should have just let that dry. Okay, well, I'll have to do more glazing down here than I expected. Okay, so I've got a bunch of these kind of large lines. I want to add little tiny dots as like textures for the rocks and then try to blend these in. More slow dry medium. drives me absolutely bonkers over here. My mop brush is getting, I need to wash it, which is why it's creating like scraping lines on there. This is getting muddier down there than I was hoping. <laughs> Ace says, don't spend too long on the mountain, and I've spent two hours on the background. Okay, I'm just gonna, I wanna tidy this up top there a bit. Um, just a bit of some highlights in there before I move on.
Not, not, yeah, okay, I gotta move on, but it, it's, it would be a, it's just a process of massaging all of this over and over and over again. This is a little bit sloppy. I think I'll have to, we'll see how, how I'm doing later on with the time. I appreciate, uh, the... <laughs> So I'm using my mop brush, which I've got, had a bit of water on, and it's like I'm kind of scrubbing some paint away. I just cleaned the canvas, right now I see the white of the canvas over there, which is not good. So, <laughs> I'm going to move move on here. What, where was I? Okay, this here. Um, so, let's now paint the turtle. Take a second here. So now I'm going to take, I can use some very similar colors that were here, which is not too surprising because there is water surrounding everything, right? So I can still use cool blues and cool reds and cool yellows on top of this because now I've got a, a bit of a warm background or, or warm uh, underpainting, which is going to keep it, it'll brighten it up, warm it a little bit regardless. So here is my cool blue. This here is not white, it's slow or it's a uh, glazing fluid. So it's gonna keep it a little bit transparent, which is perfect. And now actually you know what? Before I start doing this, I think I'm gonna go in and bring some of these details back because I think it might be I'm going to use um, I'll come back to what I was just about to do just because I feel like I might lose people if I go too far down this rabbit hole I'm going to take some warm blue I took a little bit of cool blue and I'm taking one of my smallest brushes and I'm just going to go over some details here Now I'm thinking I probably would have been a good idea just for demonstration purposes to have maybe done this earlier. I always forget. You get so locked into your own way of painting that even as a teacher it's 
So I'm just going to outline these basic shapes here. And, and I'm going to do it kind of crudely. Because I might paint over them with lighter colors and stuff anyway. This here is, is a little mistake that I've made, I think. I'm not sure exactly what's, what's going on here. Oh, I see this is the underside of the sh Oh, okay. See, that's, okay, that's another, this is also a really interesting thing. This is something that I think a lot about, is one of the dangers about painting from a photograph, uh, as opposed to drawing it out, is sometimes you lose what the actual what these forms are doing and what they how they behave in real life and sometimes it's good just kind of step back and just sort of look like okay this is like where how does um like how does how does everything connect together um because sometimes you can kind of lose sight of the larger picture and sometimes the things stop lining up properly right so so it's kind of a good idea maybe at this stage just to kind of take a look and making sure that I've got everything kind of in the, the right place when I'm painting these things together. Hmm. Oh, this is all sticky. I'm going to blow dry that. Okay, so I'm going to take um, some warm yellow, let me show you, Let's, you know what, hmm, I'm at a bit of a crossroads as to how I want to pursue, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, the darker stuff and then I'm going to glaze things uh, afterwards, so while well, I've got some of these darker colors. So I'm basically taking my warm yellow and warm blue to get a kind of a, a dark blue. I'm going to use this to paint in kind of like some of the shadows in here. And I can always tone things down, right, um, as I, when I'm glazing in a little bit later on.
now I'm going to start painting in these little spots. And I'm going to, I'm sort of just taking a general look here as to where these spots are. I'm certainly not going to go to the effort of trying to paint them exactly as they are. I'm just painting some of the, the darker spots on here. Make sure I get the curve um, on here. So using these spots to kind of create the curve. I'm just kind of randomly putting these shapes here, leaving like little spaces in between. I could get put a lot more detail in there, but I think I'm just going to keep plowing forward. Let's see, underneath here, I'm going to do the opposite. So rather than painting these shapes, I'm just going to kind of like outline shapes. Kind of it looks a bit, of, a bit messy right now, but again, some of this we're going to glaze over, and some of these details are going to kind of disappear, so it's not really, we're just sort of like faking it. Get some kind of spots and shapes towards the outer part here. Um, a few other places where it's this dark might be here
think what I'm going to do, since I'm going to paint this same thing with blue over top of here. In fact, I'm going to use a bit of glazing fluid just to thin it out. So i got glazing fluid here that I've added to this darker color. That's going to make it a little bit more transparent, even if I paint on top of the red. You know, so it's kind of slowly starting to kind of come back together. You know, um, like, quite honestly, <laughs> like, the, there's a few times in, while I've been painting this painting where my, my, uh, even the, the, the 20 years I've had painting, uh, experience, there's still, like, a few moments there where, you know, my, blood pressure starts going up really high and the feeling of panic starts to kind of creep in as I start to kind of wonder if I've completely lost the plot um, and it's just about kind of staying with it just kind of having a bit of faith that we can work it all out So I'll have to, I'm going to adjust all these colors later on. But this is all just using the you know, glaze and I can, I've got these very thin, semi-transparent layers of, of uh, blue. It's not to say that, uh, you know, things aren't, are, are, are going to go smooth sailing all the way to the end of the painting either, right? I've mentioned many, many times before how making a painting is a lot like riding a roller coaster. How so there's times where everything's going really, really well and you're super, super happy. And then all of a sudden, you know, it goes over that hill. And things get really very scary very quickly <laughs> and you know I'm, I'm in a bit of that situation but I, I it happens in every single painting um, where sometimes things are are going really well and then all of a sudden it just uh, you start losing like something happens, whether it's maybe you drop something on your painting, which is surprisingly common. Dropping a paintbrush, or you accidentally splatter some paint or water, and it starts kind of dissolving some of the image. I mean, you've seen pretty much in every single painting I've made, there are moments where, I, where something uh, happens that is unexpected, and I have to kind of dig my way out of the problem. 
and you know for the most part I'm usually able to to rescue myself there is the odd occasion where um, where I'm well you know really I mean it depends like in these classes there's the odd occasion where I can't pull it off just because of time constraints but if I was to keep going I would be able to ultimately make everything work as Tim Gunn <laughs> on uh, Project Runway likes to say, right? Make it work, people. Make it work. God, that's a show I haven't watched in ages. I used to watch Project Runway all the time. So, um, I've brought back the structure of the turtle here that I kind of had lost for a while because of my the, the way that I painted this. So, I do apologize. I'm, I feel like I might have <laughs> um, just the way that I've, I, I went about making this painting might have... Uh, made it a little bit difficult for some people my apologies for that um but you know for better or worse as i'm making any of these paintings i'm usually just flying by the seat of my pants uh if that's it's probably pretty clear already for most people they're like yeah yeah um uh but and so i'm kind of trying to solve these problems in real time um, and, well, I am just making a mess over here, trying to touch that up. I had to place where it looks like I must have scraped my paintbrush or something. Maybe it was my shirt. I bet you, sometimes it's things like this, like your button or something. Maybe you've got a watch or bracelets that can kind of scrape over the surface of the painting occasionally. And sometimes that causes um, some problems. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this same color. I'm going to add some white to it. And lots of gold. Oops. Well, you can't see what I'm doing, can you? Um, actually, you know what? This is the color I was making here earlier. 20 minutes ago. So basically this was cool blue and warm blue with some white in there and glazing fluid. Because what I was going to do is start painting in up here. So I've done a bunch of the darker um, lines and things with the glazing fluid. Now I'm kind of coming in and doing some of the highlights. And not the full, full brightest parts of the highlights, but because I'll reserve that for kind of towards the very end. Darker than I was hoping, so let's just wipe that away. Let's start this again. There's just too much paint on my brush and not enough glazing fluid. There we go, much more transparent.
instead of the cool yellow on here for this green. Wipe it right off. So there's a lot of this really nice glow coming up from underneath. So I'm just putting it on some of the dark blue. a big bright highlight eventually. extending this because it looks like maybe that thing needs to be a bit longer so this is just adding a bit of white into that same color So I've just been taking a bit of uh, white and cool blue. I'm going into a few little places here, little spots. Just being careful not to go too far. It's just like little little splotches and spots. So 
these are this is kind of this is definitely highlights where there's light coming from above that's shining and hitting these legs. glazing fluid on there Take the same color. I'm gonna go over the outline a little bit on the shell, the outer, the top part of the shell. I know it's not the right color, but it's white, so it's it'll cover pretty well. And when it's dry, I can put the color I want in its place. So this is going to come up higher, I think.
bit of a highlight on there. Okay, I'm gonna come back to my yellow, my cool yellow. Take a bit of blue on there. So it's a bit of cool blue, but mostly cool yellow with a bit of white. up the underside of this creature here. I'm kind of like just glazing it a little bit over top of some of this stuff down here. I'm going to take the same thing and glaze a bit. Okay, so I'm feeling like, I know it doesn't quite look like it, but when I glaze all of this in a little bit, I think it's going to start coming together. Um, but I might need to just do a little bit of some darker shapes back in. Okay, now I'm going to do some texture on the top of the turtle here. these kind of like starburst kind of patterns.
remember it's the accumulation of marks that makes it work right so first few layers and everything are going to look a little bit funky I'm going to do something over here, right? I want that to be bigger, actually. Um, okay. Hey, A. Masood, hello from Texas. Nice to see you in the chat there. So I'm going to get a little bit of a darker blue, and just a couple of... Some bit of a... some... just hints. Some of the darker spots on here. going to make this kind of bigger hump here. Painting some white just so it'll obscure things. come in there and fix that. I know it looks a little funky right now. A lot of things look a little funky on this painting right now, but uh, that's the process, right? You gotta trust the process. Okay. I'm gonna paint some cool yellow with white up here. Eventually when I come back around and start glazing things, I think we'll find it kind of helps unify a lot of this weirdness. It, I, you know, for a beginner, understanding where and when to glaze and what the color should be under the glaze, I guess is, is kind of tricky, right? Um, the thing to, I guess my only advice would be just remember that you can if you're glazing, you can, you know, if you dilute the paint enough, you could do hundreds and hundreds of glazes um, and not really have to worry about ruining the painting. Because... Um, uh, you can do lots and lots of glazing because you don't have to worry about the painting. Uh, so I'm going to paint this back here because I'm just kind of upset with how muddy it was getting down here. Same sort of... Glazing is just super forgiving. In fact, actually, let's paint... I'm going to paint this the same kind of yellow and shadow. I'm going to 
darken that down. This flipper just keeps getting longer and longer. some warmer blue with some of this here. Just like we did earlier on here, warm blue and some warm yellow. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix a brown that I'm going to use for a few places. So to mix that brown, I'm going to take my cool yellow, or sorry, warm yellow, a bit of warm blue, not too much, and a bit of warm red. So we can make a few different versions of this here. Get a bit more blue. It's a little dark. The light is actually dark back there. So I'm going to mix them around in a few different places. I can take the same brown and just put a couple of little maybe um, to get this pattern on the back.
right, so there's a little bit of um, got to fix up stuff in here, but stuff like that happens when you're making a painting, right? Um, so let's clean some of that up with a bit of orange. Oh my goodness, that's driving me nuts. Okay, let's take a little bit of this brighter color that I just mixed. I'm just going to put it back into kind of the center of these patterns here. bit on top of there. You know, as a, as always, like when you're when when I'm painting anyway, um, a from a photograph, there's times like you know, where I look at it and I'm really happy with the way things are and then I look at the photograph and I feel like, oh, I'm nowhere near, right? It's a totally different experience um, or it doesn't, doesn't look right. Again, you always have to remember that this is what is ultimately, you know, the, the, the goal is to make a painting, right? And so it, at some point, the original image is going to disappear. And I have to kind of make sure that this works, regardless of whatever the other thing does, right? So, um, I might go into these into the spots again and just I'm going to glaze them a, almost a little bit so I've got a bit of glazing fluid on some blue with some a bit of uh, warm yellow May says, with glazing, I sometimes find the glaze doesn't mix well with the paint. It gets streaky, and then the glaze dries on its own, and it dries, it it shows up patching and dries in flakes. Oh, dries in flakes. What am I doing wrong? Um, well, one thing to remember is the glazing fluid itself, it has a little bit of slow dry properties. Like it slows the drying down maybe 10, 20 percent, as opposed. So, so like, let let's say you put a brush stroke down with regular acrylic paint, just right out of the tube, and and let's just for the sake of argument say it will dry in bone dry in two minutes. Like, you could, it's totally dry. If you add some glazing fluid to it, and let's say you put maybe one-to-one -one glazing fluid to acrylic paint as opposed to being bone dry in two minutes it might be bone dry in 
two and a half minutes, two minutes and 25, something. So it, it extends the drying time just a little bit. Um, versus slow dry medium, you put slow dry medium in there and it goes from drying in two minutes to drying in four minutes. So it, it doubles the drying time. So the, you know what I should do is make a chart showing what each one does. Um, the, the, so the glazing fluid, it, it, it doesn't slow the drying down. So you have to kind of work with it pretty quickly. In, in, if you're, especially if you're doing thin layers, the thicker layers are going to preserve some of the, of the, uh, it's going to stay wet a little bit longer, but you have to kind of be working kind of quickly, um, with the glazing fluid. So if it's, if you're painting and it's starting to dry, first of all, you might want to think about using, not painting large areas. Like it's, it's, it is like I was doing some glazing over here, right? And it's a, kind of tricky because it starts, like you probably saw it getting a little bit sticky and patchy. Um, because it's, it's very similar to just painting paint everywhere. If I wanted to really get a little bit more, um, if I want to be able to, to brush it around a while before it dries, adding some slow dry medium to it might help dramatically. Really. Um, okay, where, where was I mixing this paint for? I hope that answers um, some of that name. So I'm taking uh, some this is warm blue and uh, warm yellow and a lot of glazing fluid and I'm just kind of going back over a few things that were a little bit bright and tamping them back down a bit. So just going over to some of these spots on my neck here. <laughs> Sue says, I got tired and cross-eyed and I lost the plot. We'll try again tomorrow. I also kind of lost the plot a few times in this painting, but you know, it's 
as I said, that's that happens every single painting, really. I probably do a pretty good job of of hiding that fact, <laughs> but it's it's hard not to like. Um, it's hard to. Um, it's hard to do this, right? And we're not always gonna make masterpieces every time. One of the things that's nice about painting, you know, in our master class, we're painting paintings by artists who like kind of solved the problem for us already. You know, like they've um, they because life there's so many details in paintings and or in, in sorry in in animals and all sorts of other things that it's like what we have to make some pretty hard decisions to to remove details and what details we decide to remove are is is really important you know it's uh, and those are hard decisions to make so it really helps having you know someone who's been there done it and wrestled with it forget that you know we often forget that you know we're looking at these paintings by by these masters um, but we forget that it might have taken them a long time like dozens of paintings to get to the point where they figured it out and solved whatever problems there were in the paintings we just get to see the final version and kind of marvel at at things and it, it looks like they just did a you know showed up out of thin air perfectly formed we forget that there was probably lots of swearing and frustration um, behind the scenes there. So, what I'm looking at here. So, as I'm kind of, at this point, I'm starting to look less and less at the original. And maybe you're like, yeah, no wonder. No wonder that's why things are turning out the way they are. But it's, be, it's partly because, you know, I'm, you know, I, I can only really give maybe another 30 minutes to this painting before I have to, to run and I gotta give our daughter a bath and um, and we you know that's probably enough time to spend on this painting anyway um, but I thought like I keep finding every time I look at the original photograph it depresses me a little bit because I'm like oh my painting isn't I, what I'm missing this or that and um, so I just have to kind of think, okay, you know what, I'm going to make my painting work as much as possible, and if, and I'll do my best to make it look as close to the original, but there's probably going to be some variations here, right? Good.
brown again. Let's get a darker brown. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of glazing with a bit of a darker brown. Just made using a warm red, warm yellow, warm blue. The more warm blue I put in there, the darker it's going to be, right? Yeah, I'm just going to do a little more glazing. Hang on. Like, I tend to use a lot of glazing fluid because I can always just... It, it makes for nice semi-transparent layers right, and that's a little bit too light so Glazing in these areas in between the top part of the shell and the bottom part of the shell. Just getting it darker and darker. So we've got like kind of a, a transition between brown and blue. And I can go over any part on the shell that needs to get a little bit darker on top. I'm getting pretty happy with the shell itself. Um, Just going to take a bit of yellow, paint it over some of this white. And because this cool yellow is very transparent, it will kind of blend pretty well or absorb the, the layers underneath it really well. Do a little bit of um, glazing with some yellow.
Okay, so I'm going to blow dry this, and then I'm going to do some glazing. Perhaps even lighten a few things and darken a few things. You know what? I feel like it might be a good idea to do a bit of white up here. So I'm going to take some white and yellow. Mostly white. Because there's this like all this light is hitting this back flipper up here. Oh, that's well. Let's uh, let's go a little bit wild with the light because we can always reduce it. I'm adding like this glaze with uh, some white in the glaze and I can kind of just go over and, and make some of these some things pop a little bit.
see how it's kind of like there's it's a few steps forward a few steps back a few steps forward a few steps back over and over and over again right and it can feel like at times you're very close to the end and then at times frustratingly far away <laughs> Um, that's just part of this process, man. It's like... But all those layers of paint have been really, really instrumental in helping me get to this point. Like, there's, there's not a single brush stroke on here that I regret having made. It all has, has played a role. this white that I'm so this is mostly just just white with a little bit of uh, glazing fluid in it and it goes on quite white obviously um, but as it dries it's getting it it, uh, it sort of recedes back um, a bit which is what I want I, I want it to kind of be a little bit bright which is a little alarming because at first you're like oh no it's too much too much too much and then slowly it kind of fades Okay, I don't know, I'm getting pretty close. I was going to do a bunch more glazing, um, but I don't know, I might, uh, hmm. I was going to do some darker glazing under here, that's true. Okay, so to do a little bit of a dark glaze, I'm just going to take some of my blue, my warm blue, just put a bit of glazing fluid on here, actually I'm going to, I'm going to wipe this paint off my brush, so that I just have glazing fluid and a bit of blue on there. Now you can see it's like much more transparent than that, right? And now I can take this and just kind of darken select parts of the painting. Like, I really like in the original, there's this kind of luminous light kind of underneath here. Oops. 
but just for the sake of my of the logic of my own painting it needs to get darker over these white lines, which darkens them as well, right? And then some of these new white lines are painted there. I think I'm pretty close to being done. I don't quite like what I just did on the front there. Just wipe a bit of it away. I'm going to add a bit more of a pure white dot on the eye to help make it pop a bit. Again, I, I look at mine, and I'm really happy with how mine's turned out. I look at the photograph, and I'm like, oh, oh, there's all these things. But this is what is going to survive. This is what's going to be on the wall. This has to work. And it's not surprising that it would deviate a little bit, especially considering how towards the end I'm looking less and less at... Uh, at the photograph, right? Just this neck area. This is probably the darkest part of the whole painting because there's really not reflected light coming up underneath in there. walk away from this. I think last thing I want to do is I want to take just a little bit of black and mix some black with my uh, warm blue and I'm going to glaze a little bit. Add a little bit of glazing fluid. It's not too intense but just going to take this black. In fact let's go to a smaller brush. I'm taking this and I'm just going to paint it into a few places because this this black will want to, uh, will try to make it's going to want to sit right on the very top of the painting so it's going to pull whatever's there that I want to be dark forward and it'll really especially as a contrast to any of the grays in the background you see I'm adding it to this this part of the body is kind of closest to us so we'd want that to be if there's any part of this painting that's going to be darkest it's going to be this area right here Okay, I think I should just cut this, say, <laughs> done. 
Um, because I'm just going to keep on tinkering with this thing endlessly. Uh, yeah, okay. We're just so, uh, let's... Um, mining. If I still remember what it is. This is, I was gonna, yeah, that's good enough. Cool, so. <laughs> managed to pull this out of, of the depths of, um, of, of, uh, failure. I'm, it would not surprise me if other people had, I mean, way more struggles with this one than I did, because I honestly probably didn't do the best job of, teaching this particular episode partly because I got myself into the weeds uh, I, you know I spent maybe a little long too much time on the background um, and then I felt like an urgency to move pretty quickly and um, and you know I was it is a constant thing I think about of which method to use and sometimes I kind of do a little bit of both and then I kind of find myself you know in between but you know I, I, again as I as I said you know even while I was making this painting there was a lot of anxiety at different points and then I was able to kind of bring it back and that's maybe that comes with experience but I think anyone can you know you want to have you want to have that feeling and you want to know that that feeling will happen all the time that, that there's going to be it's going to collapse and fall apart and you're going to be miserable and sad and frustrated and then if you stick with it and you don't give up on it you'll be able to rescue it and the the feeling of rescuing a painting that is flailing and falling apart is more satisfying infinitely more satisfying than um then the painting just, you know, starting up from the beginning all the way to the end, just in a perfect, beautiful climb to happiness, right? Uh, because I, I've very rarely ever had that experience ever happen while I'm making a painting and everything's working. Um, and because I've done so many paintings, when everything is working that well, I, I actually get more anxious because I'm like... <gasps> Oh, I know. I'm any minute now. What's going to happen in this painting? Because I, I've, I've painted long enough to know that at some point that roller coaster is going to dive back down. So I just have to hold on as tight as possible. So you know, I, I, I wouldn't surprise me if less if people <laughs> I, I saw, we had high numbers, and then as the painting was progressing, I think some people were either like, well, his painting is looking kind of sketchy. I'm not sure I want to paint this painting, if I'm considering the way it's going. Um, but hopefully people maybe jump to the end and see where it turned out and realize it. it we were able to kind of uh, solve those, those problems. Um, Heidi says, I work today. I just wanted to say I'm looking forward to seeing people's turtles. Excited about this one. Have fun, guys. Okay, well, I think I'm going to call it a day here, folks. I got lots of paint. Remember to help our ocean friends out. This is what I do at the end of every session. I just take a rag, usually the, a rag that it is um, uh, seen its final painting. And I just scrape all of this paint. You can see all this gooey paint. This is stuff I wish I had left in the tubes, which is why I tried not to put so much paint on the tubes. And I'll put this in the garbage. That way, 
when I'm cleaning my palette, as little paint is going down the sink, which is good for our sea creature friends and also good for your, your pipes and everything, right? You don't want big globs of paint going down the sink. I have a little strainer, like a very fine strainer in my, my sink, uh, my studio sink here so that it catches most of the, of the flakes of paint, the dried parts of paint off of here. And after I've cleaned everything off, I just scoop it out and throw it in the garbage. Um, anyway, uh, let me see. Um, yeah, so yeah, on Tuesday, we're going to be moving forward with our, our uh, master class. And then next Thursday is, I'm not sure if Thursday that is Earth Day itself, but that is going to be an Earth Day themed painting. So maybe we'll do another animal. I saw Josh posted something about um, Chernobyl, which was a horrible accident, which affected uh, nature. I could see, so it's like, do we want to do a, a painting celebrating the earth? Or do we want to do a painting that um, talks about the dangers facing the earth? I'm open to either one. I look forward to, um, we'll have this conversation on the Facebook group. So if you haven't joined the Facebook group yet, um, you might want to do that so we can engage in conversation and for you to share the, the turtle that you did. I can't wait to see how yours turned out, if yours turned out better than mine, um, or where your struggles are, because in a couple of weeks we'll talk about this painting and along with the, all the other ones, and I can give you some feedback on how to improve any paintings that you're not quite so happy with. Anyway, I'm going to go wash my hands and uh, and have a little bit of dinner, and then uh, we'll see you uh, on, on Tuesday. Okay. I'm losing my mind, folks. We'll talk to you soon. Good night, everyone. It's been fun painting with y'all.